Investigators examining the damaged airplane have discovered a major clue. Multiple pre-existing cracks surrounding the five foot by one foot hole that ripped open at cruising altitude Friday afternoon. We did find uh, evidence of uh, widespread cracking across this, uh, this entire fracture surface. The rupture happened 18 minutes after takeoff from Phoenix. And all of a sudden there's a loud bang and the mass drop and it's really, really windy and the ears hurt. One flight attendant and one passenger passed out from the loss of cabin pressure. The pilots descended from 36,000 feet to 11,000 feet in just four and a half minutes. We were going down fast, you could tell. This, this wasn't any joke. The pilots considered turning back to Phoenix, but when the cabin crew described the extent of the damage, the captain decided to land immediately at a military base in Yuma, Arizona. <laughs> the shaken passengers were eventually reunited with their families in Sacramento. You're never hey, going on another plane. Yes, I am. Metal fatigue was the cause of a similar Southwest incident in 2009 when another 737 had to make an emergency landing in West Virginia after a football-sized hole opened up in the hull. The year before, Southwest found cracks in half a dozen of its 737s and was fined $7.5 million for overdue inspections. This weekend, Southwest grounded 80 737s for inspection, causing 300 cancellations on Saturday and roughly the same number today. The last major inspection of this 15-year-old jet was a year ago. That is exactly why we are here, to look at why this problem occurred, why it was not detected, and why this event happens. Investigators are removing a large section of the plane's roof around the tear and bringing it here to Washington for more analysis. The black boxes are already here, and investigators say those boxes captured very good data about everything that happened during and after the incident. Russ? Nancy Cordes in Washington. Thank you.